Hey guys, it's Rory and today I've got another KSP video. In this one we're actually going to try and build, well I'm trying to build a, uh, a vertical takeoff landing plane. So this is a bit more difficult than it might seem because there's a lot, it's like almost like building a space shuttle where you've got to balance the center of thrust and center of mass, I'll talk about that a bit later. But uh, yeah, I was doing this all on live stream. Again, I've got 1,500 subscribers now. We should be able to get a decent following on the live stream as well. Um, I would like to know what times suit you to st for me to stream at. So, you know, leave that down in the comments below. But yeah, you know, it'd be nice if you could come and say hello. There's a link on my YouTube channel page if you want to go and check out the Twitch stream. Because I stream there a bit more now. Anyway, in this one, as you can see, we're building a plane, but it's not just any plane, we're actually going to try and build a vertical takeoff landing plane, or a VTOL. And this is for a specific reason, but you don't know this yet, so we'll leave that till after the end of this video, but the next one's a good one, uh, I promise. Anyway, so, what we're doing is, uh, at the moment, trying to actually, well, first of all, we're sticking all the stuff that we really need on. And uh, I hope, by the way, you like this form of commentary. I'm going to kind of try and keep the videos all to around five minutes from now, and I think that'll work. But uh, so it means I can't uh, rabble on for too long, I guess, on a single topic. So what we're doing now is deciding what we might actually need on the plane, what we definitely don't need. And at the moment, okay, I'm using part clipping, by the way. Uh, that's just to make it look a bit tidier. I could do it without, but it wouldn't look quite so good. So I'm keeping it. And uh, yeah, what I'm doing at the moment is actually just uh, attaching the engines to the plane in a way which is going to, you know, balance out the thrust with the center of mass. Because when a VTOL's taking off, uh, you've got to imagine, like in a rocket, if you had the center of thrust facing the wrong way, like in the space shuttle, for example, um, if the center of thrust isn't through the center of mass, it's going to start to spin out. And that's the same thing with a VTOL when it's taking off, because it's got no control surfaces that point in that direction to help it. So anyway, I uh, went through various iterations of design. I'm not going to show you the flights in between, but I'll show you. So this is that was the first iteration. This is me changing it then for the second iteration. I don't change too much, just add a few fuel lines, that kind of thing. Um, and then uh, set loads of thrust limiters because I tried to balance it so that the center of thrust, sorry, so that the amount of thrust that I need to take off with the VTOL engines um, and to hover is like a big notch on the nav ball, making that whole process a lot easier. And you'll see now, this is when I take it off. Um, but basically what that would allow me to do is hover with, you know, without having to work out exactly where it is every single time. And okay, it'll change with fuel levels and things, but it's good to have like a notch on the nav ball where I know if my throttle's at this notch, I should be about a hovering point. And it ended up being about two thirds at the end. Although, uh, yeah. Anyway, now I uh, use the action groups, which I just set up to actually switch between the two, en two lots of engines, which makes it a whole lot easier. Uh, to start off with, I tried doing it manually and it was just a pain. So yeah, if you're ever doing anything like this, you're gonna need to use action groups. And surprisingly, it actually flies pretty well for a, for a VTOL. Uh, the extra weight and the center of lift not being quite in line with the cent center of mass as well as they could be, means it's maybe not the best plane, but it still flies reasonably well and I'm pretty happy with how it performs. And now, like you can see, I try and put it back into VTOL mode basically and I'm actually going to try and land on the vehicle assembly building. Now this is where that hover point becomes very important because I don't want to have to worry about adjusting my thrust, thrust at the same time as I'm having to worry about adjusting my you know pitch, your roll and uh, translation. Well it's not really translation but you use the pitch and you use the roll to do the translation. So you'll see how that works in a second. So right now, I'm kind of finding my hovering point getting stable in the air. And then you can see there, I just pitched forward a little bit. That's gonna uh, balance me out. And now I can pitch forward and roll left a little bit. That's gonna move me a bit forward and to the left. And that's, you have to do this really, really carefully because you can't go too fast um, The unless you use rocket engines because the jet engines are actually very very slow to sort of spool up and spool down so you can't change the throttle very quickly they're not very reactive but anyway it seems to work fairly well it actually lands really well handles really well so it's going to be good for the next project i've got in mind or that i've already done so anyway guys i hope you liked the video as always thanks for watching and have a nice day